Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I have an unusual concept for you. Not sure what this is going to be in the title just yet, but I have a feeling it's going to be something like waxing or waning ego. This is weird. This is one of my experimental ideas, everybody. It's not anything official. This doesn't come from a book or any of that. This comes through contemplation. On the weekend, I was chatting with my mum about, what were we chatting about? We were chatting about emotions and we were chatting about prayer and we were chatting about free will and we were chatting about uh, all these wonderful concepts. It was a really great conversation and you know when you have one of those great conversations and your mind starts working and you get ideas and so this idea occurred to me about waxing or waning ego and I drew on my bullet journal notebook. Look I'm going to show you this is I'm just going to draw this on the whiteboard but there's the diagram there I wonder if it's going to there we go you can see it right so that is the diagram I'm now going to draw this uh, on my little whiteboard and explain it. Hang on, I should make sure that I'm... Yeah, there we go. Okay, right. So this is one of those, going to be one of those experimental strange videos where I'm making it up and we're going to go to some interesting places. I like doing this. I like going on a journey, an adventure. So I started thinking about this concept of ego and where do you see ego in a chart. Can you see ego in a chart? And I'm going to say yes you can, but you kind of, it's, it's by degrees, right? It's, um, you can see how much ego a person has. This is, this is interesting. This is experimental. It's interesting. This is something that you want to verify. If you're an astrologer, you want to look up some charts and verify it. I've verified it with a few charts. I've opened up a few different charts and I'm like, there's something in this. I'm like, this is working for me anyway. So I've got one arrow that goes like this. One arrow that goes from the first house here to the sixth. And I'm going to call that waxing ego. I write it down here. Waxing, wax on, wax off. This is like, um, what's that film? The Karate Kid. <laughs> Waxing ego. So what I'm saying here is that from the first house through to the sixth house, the ego gets progressively bigger. And then from the seventh to the twelfth, it diminishes. I'm going to draw my arrow like this. I'm going to say waning ego. Like that. As you can see, it's waxing. The ego, we don't have an ego when we're born. So let's say, for example, you know there's that theory about how each a house represents a year in your life. So when you're born, you do not have much ego. And it starts to develop as you, as you age. You're two years old, you've got more interaction with the family. You're three, you start to get some little friends. You're four, maybe you start to go to school, right? And ego does become fully developed by the time you're about six or seven years old. I'm pretty sure that's a psychological thing. I have studied... Um, quite a lot of texts and there's a system that I'm trying to think of where they talk about the different personalities whether you're a schizoid a psychopath and by the time you get to six or seven I think you're a rigid character it's that system that I'm thinking of but by the time you're six or seven your ego is really fully developed and then I was thinking seven because seven and uh, lords of these two are the marika the death lords right so, so ego starts to die in the seventh now why would ego start to die in the seventh because that's partnership right that is where it's not just about you now it's about your partner it's about 
you know, um, so ego has to die a little bit here. It really has to. And ego comes to zero, I would say, here. So I would say by the time you're at this Pisces place, there's zero ego when you get here. And I would say that the ego is at its maximum here in Virgo. Hope you can see that. Now, isn't that interesting? And I think in the title, I'm going to put some questions, something about who do you think is the most egotistical sign? And I bet everybody thinks it's Leo, you know, but no, I actually think it's Virgo. I think it's Virgo is the most egotistical and that's not bad. If you're Virgo, please don't be triggered by that. Please don't think, oh no, I'm very egotistical and that's bad. Or, no, it's not bad at all. Healthy ego is incredible. You can do so much with that. You can be a CEO with that, right? And let me tell you, the CEOs and the prime ministers, they're definitely coming out of here. I've seen many, many top people with a lot of great Virgo. You know, Leo is, um, Leo is Bruno Mars. Lucky for you, that's what I like. Hey, I'll see if I can get that clip and I'll, I'll put it in here. Lucky for you, that's what but, I like. That's what I like. I mean, I think I think the height of the height of um, the ego is, is is in Virgo, and that does account for healthy ego. It's the CEOs, it's the prime ministers, it's the people who are leading things, it's the people who are running things, it's the people who aren't afraid to draw the line. They aren't afraid to draw the line. They um, are builders, they create. There's a lot of good things that come out of here, right? There's a lot of conflict that happens in here as well. And if I've just um, recently recorded my uh, John Lennon Coffee with John Lennon, it's really interesting because there was Saturn and Jupiter and all of that moving through here, and there was a lot of talk of the Vietnam War. And I think in that I said something like the mercurial pen pushers, you know, who are ordering war from behind a desk. Yeah, because I started thinking about this as a war house. Because we always think of war with Mars, don't we? Um, but it's, it's not just Mars. Um, Mars people will get out and they actually do the war. But the mercurial ones will order a war from behind a desk. So a lot of leaders come out of here. Um, division. Division is at its highest here. And that's what ego is all about, right? Um, there's zero ego up here. There's zero ego. There's no boundaries. There's all is one up here in the 12th. Down here in the 6th, that's where ego is at its height, I do believe. So guys, I think I'm going to leave you with that concept. Let me know below if you found this interesting. It's just an idea. It's just something that I was thinking about that got sparked after really interesting discussion that I had um, that got my mind working and that kind of thing happens sometimes when my mind actually does work so um, I'm always amazed and when that does happen which is rare I'll pull out my trusty bullet journal and jot down whatever came in but I hope that's been interesting for you um, please do let me know in the comments below if you like this kind of thing and I look forward to seeing you next time Hi everyone, just quickly, one thing I forgot to mention was how to read this thing or a way of reading this thing. So let me just put, so I'm, we're going to look at this 10th house here and let's say in your 10th house you've got Virgo, right? Six here, Virgo. Okay, how would you read that? And how I would read it is a bit of a combination between the two. So you can see, according to this, it's like, okay, we've got the maximum uh, ego sign, but then we've got a waning house, right? And then in your mind, just try to find the right balance between the two. Um, you'll see that, okay, Virgo here, yeah, there'll be, there'll be an ego, all right, but this person because this is positioned here in this house, which is a waning house, there's automatically some balance that comes in by the house. So this person has been granted some responsibility. That's the other thing, you know, you're, you're granted a lot more uh, responsibility as your ego does wane. Look at that, you know, we've got 
especially in these Saturnian houses here, here where you're responsible, uh, you know, you've reached the height of your career or whatever that is, and here where you're kind of quite responsible for the collective. So there's a lot to weigh up, but that's just one little example that I thought I would pull up. How I read these things is I look at a combination of the house and the sign. And, and somewhere intuitively I'm able to get a feel for um, the percentage that I would allocate to each. So I just thought I would add that in uh, in case you're wondering about that. All right. Thank you.